I am Loki of Asgard, and I am burdened with glorious purpose. Oh, yeah. my jet ski magazine put it down. This isn't about you. Not what you were expecting. This is a man. Question, love? Don't tell me I'm a disappointment. Just a little bit easier to kill. <laughs> You heard it up top in a very special episode. We are about to talk the god of mischief himself. Things are about to get a little tricky, a little time warpy, a little weird. And uh, that might not have been me who was even saying those words up top because, of course, you are joined by your host, talking Loki, normies like us, with uh, Variant Colin. This is Variant Mike. And this is Variant Jacob. Ooh. Ooh. Three variants in the house, gentlemen. Now, what did uh, what did each of us do that uh, got us off our timeline? Well, I believe for me, if you're watching the video on YouTube, uh, I did not do my hair well. Not that I normally do, but this is the worst <laughs> hair day I've ever had. I think that's the variant split oh, here. Sure. And I never wear sure, green. So, What if you're just a variant that parted your hair the opposite direction? Well, the that's the Spider-Man version. three. I think that's a variant Peter that showed up. Right. Uh, <laughs> that'll get explained. Wow! If in we the can get movie. into those theories now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. very excited. Yes, I'm the I'm the Colin who loves Spider-Man three. So that is my crime against humanity. Uh, okay. I hate Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> variant Mike, <laughs> it's you. Yeah. How dare you? And we're the the Joe who remains is not with us this week. Uh, he's cleaning up the sacred timeline. Uh, we'll we'll be back. That's right. Uh, <laughs> in That's the right. Future, at the end of all things. Um, and listeners, you might not know what we're all talking about and joking about if you didn't catch Disney Plus's limited series Loki. Ooh, except is it a limited series? We're going to be talking spoilers. We're going to be talking state of the marvel universe all that jazz and stuff we'll get to it or whatever but uh do you guys like north Maso- norse mythology do you like loki thor all that jazz jacob yeah i think it's pretty uh it's pretty cool you know if you're in the vikings that kind of thing it's it's uh it's fun do you like yeah. the thor movies i know you've talked about ragnarok before yes i would say thor ragnarok is one of my favorite mcu movies in general so i like the mythology behind it uh and yeah it's great yeah for me how about you norse mythology interestingly i think right before loki came out we ended up watching ragnarok on netflix which is also Mm. kind of a modern take on norse myth um it's like a you know just netflix series um so i kind of into the source material i like all mythology um you know, Mad Max, they talk about Valhalla, you know, sign me up. Um, so I, I like the source material, the kind of mythology. But as I mentioned, sort of with WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, not really a character that I care for. Ragnarok, along mm. with Jacob, is my favorite Thor movie, but didn't really care about Loki. But briefly, the show made me care about him a lot more than I thought I ever could. So, yeah. Interesting. How about right. you, Colin? Well, I love that that's your ongoing arc, Mike. These background Marvel characters that you're kind of enjoying a little more. Um, mm-hmm. You know, as a kid, I believe I have said before, I love all Marvel comics. I did not read Thor comics because the bias was well, that's like a real thing. That would be like if Stan Lee had like a Jesus book. Like, what <laughs> what would I do with that? That means nothing to me. Right. Like, I want to read about the Incredible Hulk. He's not going to show up in the Bible or I'm not going to learn about Thor at school. You know, you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. It bugged me. But um, as a jaded adult, I see now, like, Stan Lee and his brother, a very original take on Thor. And how close they kind of get to that in these movies is kind of like a groovy wave line that goes back and forth that I think's been kind of like a wild trip. I never necessarily loved Tom Hiddleston's Loki as, like, a a huge character. We would go to these movies, people would scream. I went to the uh, Thor 2 The Dark World opening out here, not not the movie opening, but like opening night at the big Disney theater out here, the El Capitan. Mm-hmm. First screening with the Joe who remains, we should say. He, he took some time off from the Citadel to come to this movie. And uh, most people were dressed like Loki and every girl was screaming his name. Like it, it truly was at that moment a phenomenon. And I, I really didn't understand it. I'll say I like the direction of the current Thor uh, movies with uh, Taika Waititi. I didn't like Thor 
or Thor 2 that much as movies. And I wasn't like super into the MCU Thor or Loki until Thor Ragnarok probably. And then with the show definitely uh, renewed my interest in, in Loki more as well. Yeah. And I'd say for me, Loki was only ever interesting before this, like in Endgame when like, right. He's kind of, sure. well, you know, he's salvages relationship with Thor and he's trying to maybe turn face, you know, it's like, oh, okay. yeah, obviously he was the first villain of the first Avengers movie and he was kind of, you know, one dimensional on that, obviously. But I think he's definitely got a lot more depth to him since then. And it's interesting that this Loki is the Loki that comes directly from the end of Avengers 1, right? Again, it's too much. The fact that my father has to ask me these questions before he sees this thing. So explain out. So this is this guy's a different guy than the other one. Because I've seen him die, right? And it's just, it's a clusterfuck that we're going to jump into right now when we're talking Loki on Normies Like Us. Long ago, there was a vast multiversal war. Countless unique timelines battled each other for supremacy, nearly resulting in the total destruction of, well, everything. But then the all-knowing timekeepers emerged, bringing peace by reorganizing the multiverse into a single timeline, the Sacred Timeline. Now, the timekeepers protect and preserve the proper flow of time for everyone and everything. But sometimes, people like you veer off the path the timekeepers created. We call those variants. Maybe you started an uprising, or were just late for work. Whatever it was, stepping off your path created a nexus event, which left unchecked could branch off into madness, leading to another multiversal war. We're back. We're about to get mischievous. Talking Loki here uh, on Normies Like Us. Now, spoilers, as we said again, we're kind of going to sum up where things are. If you want to talk other Marvel stuff, we just did a Black Widow episode, boys. Very happy about that. Mm -hmm. We're loving the Marvel movies at the moment. Normies, go back and give that one a listen. Where we are now, Mike, you were just saying you loved Endgame. We all loved seeing Loki die, question mark, dot, dot, dot. Yep. If you watch that um, making of, of Loki that they just dropped on Disney+, Plus, Tom Hiddleston reacts and says, so I turned to Kevin Feige and said, so this is it? And he said, this is it. And at that moment, we were done. No more Loki ever. Except in Endgame, we get a really cool moment of Loki gets away with the Tesseract. And adventure away we go. This is the premise of this Loki TV show. Yeah, yeah. Right. He becomes a variant and uh, splits off from the main timeline. And then, obviously, there's a bunch of uh, time travel and dimensions and all that kind of stuff fun stuff right yeah yeah and i guess you know this aired a couple weeks ago to kind of broadly speaking we learn about the sacred timeline that the the timekeepers the three space lizards are trying to keep in order and the tva is an organization tasked with kind of policing any branching or you know parallel universe that might crop up as a result and they they trying to catch a dangerous loki so they use an who, to, who better to catch a loki than a loki i guess and uh, we That's get right. the the uh, entry of owen wilson into the mcu as mobius and i think he's just great That's right as a kind of the handler of loki how do we feel about mobius i guess real quick uh yeah he's great uh the best love owen wilson all the time he's he's always fun to see so yeah and I think that uh, him and Loki have, you know, good chemistry together. And, and I really like uh, their little conversations and their philosophical debates that they have in this show. Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of people are compare this to, say, like Doctor Strange, like Marvel's mm. Doctor Strange. And um, I definitely kind of see that parallel here. Just the weird. A scenarios little doctor on Doctor Mike, maybe Strange meets who? And they come together. Oh, this yeah. Dr. Love Hugh. Child. That's right. Yeah. Something like that. And then I guess to just kind of go through the arc and we'll jump around. You know, we meet our second Loki. Everyone finds out that it's now Sylvie, you know, or Lady Loki. But Sylvie is uh, her name. Then they have a little adventure trying to get to who is really controlling the TVA, uh, which we learn that is he who remains, a.k.a. Kang, or a version of Kang played by Jonathan Majors of... Uh, 
<laughs> Lovecraft right. Country, uh, did doing Spoiler a great alert. job. Spoiler alert. Wild. So, um, yeah, I did. So I'm not the, the comic expert here. We have one comic expert, Colin, but uh, one of our comic experts is not here. I did some reading after this, right, to see, like, what's going on? Who's this Kang guy? Because oh, I'm not, you know, super familiar with this. But apparently this is going to be some big foreshadowing for maybe the major villain of Phase 4, right, of the Marvel. Yeah, and I guess you. that that's the biggest bombshell that was dropped on us is the reveal of Kang. And Colin, like, well, how do you feel, one, about you, you watch some Lovecraft Country as well. You know, I'm a big fan of this actor. I'm really happy to see him. And as Jacob's saying, if he's going yeah. to be the next big bad right. Avengers level threat, I, I'm super excited about that. Look, I'm going to keep plugging our old episodes. We did a Lovecraft Country. <laughs> Go back, listen to it. We all had our thoughts on that. To some mine up, got a little off the rails. But Jonathan Majors was somebody we were like consistently through that thing. Like, God, this guy fucking rules. He fucking rocks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely um, he was definitely an up and coming star, so for sure. Yes, charismatic, has great energy, very cool. Kang is not that, you know. Uh, to talk to my non comic friends, Kang is a weird, groovy character. I like these cats called the Fantastic Four. That's what I'm excited about. He is the main villain to the Fantastic oh. Four. You would say, Colin, no, you're talking about Doctor Doom. I would fire back how dare you dr doom's actually the hero of the comic books fantastic four (laughs) there's a lot of proof to that so kang is sort of ultimately their big rival he's a guy from the like 32nd century he's he's eobard thon he's the reverse flash Mm. right he's this guy who who just manipulates the timeline constantly pulling off time crimes and hijinks and goofy stuff wears a suit of armor constantly goes against the avengers now let me say this boy i like this guy he Who Remains. Not in the comics, but very well could be a, a variant, we'll call them from here on out, and we'll mm. talk about that in a second, Normies, of Kang. The Egyptian king, Ramses II, a version of Kang. Uh, mm. a, a character, a little boy called Iron Lad, who's a young Avenger who, who, who helps fight supervillains in the future, a version of Kang. Mm. Reed Richard's like, grandfather, uh... a version of Kang. He's almost like a Vandal Savage, right? Where he's immortal totally. and he's been these different warlords in history where Vandal Savage was like Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan or whatever. Um, that is the perfect yeah, nice, one-to-one yeah. to the DC of it. Interesting. But this is, we should say, a good version of Kang, a good variant probably, but then he is killed off by Sylvie. Dumb yeah. comic booky stuff. So the Thor comics were wild. Right, they were mainly done by people on drugs. Larry Lieber, Stan Lee, two crazy brothers who would just sure. smoke a lot of weed and just like write the craziest stuff possible. This guy named He Who Remains has appeared in one comic book, a Thor comic book, where Thor, almost Douglas Adams esque, right, to my, my fellow um, mm. hitchhiker fans here, goes to the end of time. And just realizes it's just one old guy left on a rock who's just sort of like has Alzheimer's and he's crazy. That's he That's who remains. Mm. Now, what we but haven't says, said. Yeah. Well, there's, this is just sort of an amalgam character is what I'll say for the show. There's this thing called a mortem. That's a good version of Kang. Another variant sort of thing who creates the TVA as a false society to sort of monitor time. Obviously, that's much closer to what we actually got. Right. And we find gotcha. out he obviously is behind the uh, timekeepers, which are just kind of robots, decoys. Um, a little Wizard of Oz, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's totally the man like. behind the curtains. But he kind of speaks in riddles, right? But then he foreshadows and says, if you kill me, I'm stopping like the bad guys from coming, right? And if you kill me, then the bad guy version of me is going to show up. And then what do they do? They kill him, or Sylvie does at least. Yeah. You no, know, Loki's very against that idea, so it's very interesting. Uh, but it could be major implications with bringing Kang. Into Jonathan, the major universe. implications. Oh I would say. my gosh! Go. Go. How did you beat me like, to that? We know these things. How dare you? You Mike. knew what I was going to say. These things didn't you? like he's he's going to be in Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Man. Yeah. And you go like, what does that mean? Because because Jacob, you're you're bringing up these great points of like going forward. 
it seems like there's going to be a universal threat to the Marvel characters. They, they had great success with that with Josh Brolin's Thanos. Seems like Kang's a great way to set that up. Worlds collide. There's a couple, you know, comic properties these assholes just bought that maybe need to get introduced in a big grandiose way, and maybe yep. Kang's a good delivering device for that. Mm. But Jacob, what does that have to do with Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> How can you have a right. film where he is the villain of that, where uh, Ant-Man succeeds at the end of the day and beats Kang? Does he beat a variant of Kang? Does he, you know, set up a Avengers time war movie or, or you know, whatever they would call Avengers 5? Right. Well, it's like, you know, the, obviously the quantum verse or whatever is going to be involved. So maybe he's in the quantum verse. Um, I don't like any of it. I don't like that that's how they time travel. I don't like any of it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. And I wonder if, you know, we have uh, the Eternals as well. I wonder if, if oh, you know, there's man. Be any connections there too. But Yeah. Because uh, we're, we're, we're ha- like, like you're saying, I like that there's a ton of options opened up, but it also is like, well, now nothing matters. Like, if this is the Eternals, it's just one version of the Eternals on one timeline. That is it consequential uh, or is it not? You know, interesting, where, Mike. Uh, even like, oh, why did the Avengers get to go back in time? Because that was supposed to happen. It's like, okay, so what is right, anything? Right. There was no stakes in Endgame retroactively because they could have never lost. Because if they did, that timeline would have gotten pruned. You know what I mean? Right. Like, what we saw yeah, was what's... the only version that was allowed to happen. Right, but that's what's interesting about the show because now, after the events now that's of the show, right. yeah, now they're not yeah. pruning timelines, right? So they can really now anything can happen because it could. There's a million different branches, I guess. Yeah, and I think that's where the intrigue is coming because we're, we're you get a Kang that you can have a ton of different versions, good versions, bad versions, allies, competent ones, incompetent ones, and I like that it sets up Jonathan Majors to be like this kind of serial villain, like every Saturday morning, there'll be like a new Kang and they got to stomp yeah. him down until the final right. Kang shows up. And oh, it's like Mike, my an favorite. Avengers level threat, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, so it could just be a di- bunch of different variants with different personalities, that kind of thing. That could, if be anybody could elevate him to being a really cool villain, it probably is Jonathan majors. Cause off of one episode, he's like the most exciting thing about the show. Right. Right. And um, another thing that I'm thinking of in the future, and I don't know anything about, you know, this kind of thing, but the next Spider-Man, we know there's going to be all kinds of like multiverse cameos or whatever. We know Tobey Maguire and yes. Andrew Garfield are going to be Molina, in Alfred Molina, Jamie Foxx. Yeah. yeah. Now, let me say this, Jacob. I find this all fascinating that we're kind of eating our dessert first. We're talking about <laughs> the true. implications of this show. Because right. that's, no, I'm with it because that's what's of the show. cool. No, but that's what's cool about Marvel. It's like, yo, what does this mean for the rest of it? But I'll ask you this because you are bringing up stuff like that. Does that mean, whether it's the post credit of Spider-Man, whether it's whatever, that there's a scene where, you know, Kang, Scooby-Doo style, opens up a portal and goes, Electro from Amazing Spider-Man 2, you know, Doc Ock from Spider-Man 2. Get in there, you know, go cause trouble. And that, like, like Kang is doing these things in the background for the rest of time? I hope so. (laughs) I really want him to have a little door that he pops out of and then close it. Sidely whiplash. He unleashes a couple minions and like, all right, that'll do. Yes. That's great. Um, Because we have Multiverse of Madness, too. So, I mean, there's a lot of this. I feel like multiverses and different timelines. I'll throw you one more. We did a WandaVision episode. We we now know because of what the word Nexus meant in that show to what it means to us now after watching Loki mm-hmm. with these Nexus events opposed to Nexus beings as we learned with her. Yeah. That there is stuff to get excited about. That was set up for, you know, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It's it's all big going forward, guys. I mean, I'm, even, I'm into it. Even to tie in Captain America or Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier that character it's like Alexi in Black Widow keeps talking about fighting Captain America. Like, did he? And if he didn't, can we get a variant Captain America mm. to fight him, please? You know? Uh, right. <laughs> um, well, but is this so, not what What If is? Is this what that animated show would be? I believe this is going to be a bunch of they said it's gonna be uh, alternate connected to this. Yeah. stories, yeah. but I don't know if that's if they're going to be considered canon technically. Well, they're, they're, just, you know, they're all just variants. They're variant right, timelines. Right. Yeah, I think according to this. Now, I will say, so. yeah. Um, 
this is something that I like about the connected universe of the MCU. Some people say it's a, you know, use it as a criticism to say, well, these Netflix shows, the whole point of them was just to set up future events in different movies and stuff. But if you make them well enough, I think it doesn't really matter because if, if they're quality shows, then it's just, uh, yeah. you know, I'll still watch them. And we're definitely having our dessert first, but time doesn't matter. The, another thing I want to bring up while That's we're right, getting Mike. through the chocolate lava cake on. We rewind um, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the idea of where things are going, like you mentioned, the mutants, Colin, can that be a, be a, an option here? Possibly. Um, the Spider-Man Venom verse does that become folded in? Do we get Venom and Carnage <laughs> finally coming into the MCU? I know Jacob Woody Harrelson puts it. on a cowboy hat as he steps through a portal and says, "I'm here to kill this kid." Come on, guys. Oh yeah. Tom no, Hardy great. versus Tom Holland. Come oh, on. the two. Gotta make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> only one Tom H. Can... Destiny. <laughs> there can only be one. T- the Tom Highlander movie. But obviously, yeah. I mean, multiverse is different timelines. This is going to be a big theme of Phase Four, right? That's something that's like we can see in all these different and projects. And I think now, that's so. what's fun is now people can speculate. Anything goes. Like I was talking with with my cousin, like how exciting it would be if in a future Black Panther line, there's one where Killmonger didn't die and we can bring back Michael B. Jordan just for another one-off because mm, I like that character. Your mistakes. Well, no, yeah, I know like... Shuri is supposed to be the new Black Panther and that's also cool, but also just give me Killmonger back for a little bit. Give me Claw back. Maybe I just want those right. guys, but anything goes now. That That's all on the table, right? And we mentioned the What If show that's going to be coming out soon and there is a Black Panther. There's like one where... Black Panther is Captain America or something like that. I forget, but yeah, yes, um, I think so. Yeah. So th- that's all things that can be explored. So I think that's what was most successful with Loki, I guess, is kind of after Endgame, you're like, well, what, what happens now? And I feel at least for me, and it seems like by this conversation, you guys as well, our imaginations are really stimulated for what is next for Marvel and in, in an exciting yeah. way, which it hasn't been for a long time. Yeah. I love you, my sons. Remember this place. Home. Loki, I thought the world of you. I thought we were going to fight side by side forever. You know, maybe you're not so bad after all, brother. Maybe not. Thank you. If you're here, I might even give you a hug. <laughs> I'm here. a great way to put it mike you know the same way where i'm like oh the idea that we've got one actor cast as a person but it can be four or five different people play him and you bring in this cast or cabal of just like the most incredible talent possible that's a sandbox they're willing to play in now you know for years johnny depp and 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 uh tried to make a doctor strange and and tom cruise tried to make an iron man you could see marvel paying off these assholes for two Mm. scenes where they go through a portal and they switch and it's you know them playing them instead come on right well i think it's interesting you know post infinity war and endgame they kind of you know shot their load with that right and it's like where do you go from here like we've kind of done everything conventional (laughs) in comics so now it's all about yeah you know wacky timelines and all kinds of stuff so i think that's it's gonna be fun to see what happens which i guess is like the most comic booky thing you could introduce to the masses you know right multiple universes and shit so yeah you know well it's it's i like it because these are comic book movies and that's just something that's kind of a thing with comics is Mm -hmm. that um you know you get all these different things so it's like they're almost yeah like they're they're like putting comics into the mainstream 
uh, all the movies. weirdness. And, and, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. And yeah. the further they go with it, because you know, mainstream audiences will buy more and more these days. Yeah, they're so used to the idea of these comics. That's the byproduct, ideas. Jacob. This awakening in our minds as a society, where like now going forward, you know, this sounds like a dumb thing to say. But a Christopher Nolan standalone multiverse movie will be able to buy into a dumb general audience more who goes like, oh, that's like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, or that's like Rick and Morty. That's what taught me about that. These concepts that, you know, Isaac Asimov and people wrote about for hundreds of years now, like yeah, it, it does right. make sense. Thanks, to, thanks for bringing the, the intellectual level of this conversation up. <laughs> With an Asimov reference, Colin, I appreciate that. And a Rick and Morty reference, you have to have a. Very oh, that's high the IQ biggest IQ. Have yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> and a Rick and Morty writer, Michael Waldron, who who started out as an assistant on Community Guys. I've been tracking this motherfucker's career with just like salvating envy, hmm. uh, as he as he rises up now to be the showrunner of Loki. You know, writing this thing, directed by Kate Heron. Um, a British director, TV, primarily known for that that British TV show, what Sex Ed or Sex Life? What what's that one with the kids? What's that? Down on Netflix too? I think it's Sex Ed, maybe. Yeah, uh, it's a dumb Netflix thing too. Yeah, yeah. So you know, just fresh talent coming in, and I kid you not, writing something where with each episode built on general cliffhangers, but I would buy into and go. Well, shit! How are they going to get off this plant? This called planet called Lamentus Four, or you know, how are they? Well, Loki just died. What what does that mean? Or, you know, like, now they're about to enter this castle on an asteroid. Jesus Christ, who is going to be in there? Uh, yeah, Great yeah. sense of mystery for a show called Journey into Mystery. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned the Rick and Morty, and I, I had mentioned, I said Doctor Strange, but I meant to say Doctor Who. But, yeah, Rick and Morty is another kind of thing. They that both work, Mike. Reference with this, too, you know, weird portals. We gotta go find a yeah. variant of yes. you, Morty. Like, oh geez. Well, it's man. interesting, you know. Um, obviously, the Russo brothers also started on Community, so I guess there's just a lot of talent from those Community. Dan Harmon did some writing on Doctor Strange. You can just see him salivating, though, being like, "Can I write, you know, what, like right. the Silver Surfer movie?" Oh God, right, right. Yeah, and and this show, I think, succeeded with the cliffhangers again. I was the first one, I think, when we talked about the announcement of all the different Marvel shows that I was like, "Who? What the fuck is Loki? I don't give two shits." You know, I, I had zero interest in. It. And by the end right. of the first episode, right, you start learning about the TVA and and like how this is all working. It's got a great aesthetic, that kind of Cold War, you know, fifties, sixties, um, cold concrete bunker vibes. Mm -hmm. I loved it, and it just hell yeah. Where does it go from here? Yeah. And when he looks out the window and you just it just you see the whole uh, wide shot of everything, it looks so good, like, Blown yeah, for, especially on a, like a TV budget. But yeah, um, the show looks incredible, too. It's shot. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, like my my first, uh, you know, what I my expectations for these shows, for these three Marvel shows that have come out on Disney Plus has been like almost opposite my expectations. So like. The, the one that I thought I would like the most was, is, was Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And then the other two, WandaVision and Loki, I was like, ah, eh, I'm not that interested. But those ended up being the better ones. So it's like, it's crazy. So do we ask this then, Kyle? Let me throw it to you first. What is the hierarchy of these three shows now? This one also being the only one that's confirmed for a second season. Interesting, yes. I would say it has to go that way. That, Jacob, I'm 100% with you. It's It's got to go... I, I played with my Marvel order of all the properties on my Letterboxd account earlier. Mm -hmm. Loki has now like broken top three, top four. So it's, oh, wow. it's going all the way up there. Wow. WandaVision doing pretty good. And then I've, I've told you guys before, the only thing beating out uh, uh, Captain Falcon for the worst spot is Ant-Man and Thor 2. So it is number three of the worst right. thing Marvel has ever made. Oh, man. And it was yeah. handicapped yeah, would... by having a, a whole subplot ripped out. But definitely yes, the weakest yes, of these. Yes, we, excuses aside, it, yeah. definitely the weakest yeah. of me. And I, I think know. Loki's one, Wanda two, and then yeah, uh, that's, Falcon and Winter Soldier's three. Yeah, that's my order of these three shows as well. I think uh, Loki is definitely my favorite, and then WandaVision second best. Which is sure. interesting because, as far as action shows, I mean, WandaVision didn't have a ton either. It was very plotty and talky and, you know, mystery based too. But this, again, has a right. lot of talking more that, so than action, a little bit more action than WandaVision. But, well, I liked uh, WandaVision, most of WandaVision up until the end when it became more of a traditional, like, 
you know, I'm shooting purple Marvel lasers laser and you, scene. I'm shooting red lasers. Whereas Loki, I liked it all the way through because the ending, it doesn't end with that kind of big battle. Like the climax is kind of an anti-climax where they just meet this guy and he just like talks at him for a bit, right? I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So I actually... have to wonder if that's conscious choice, Jacob, to, to take ending on the big witch battle for the last episode. Ugh, kind of bad reception. Well, let's penultimate it. They'll fight Eliath, a big cloud monster, and then they'll have a 40-minute conversation with a whack job. And you're like, oh, right. interesting. And that seems right. to be like a lot of people's favorite episode is just them sitting yeah. talking to this weird guy, you know? He's like picking his nose. Yeah, I'm human. You know, it's like very strange. Um yeah. But it works. I think the characters and the relationship between the characters are really strong in this with Loki and Sylvie, Mobius, like, you know, there's a lot of different perspectives, but you kind of get where they're all coming from. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of relationships, let's talk about the most important one of these, the uh, the Sylvie x Loki. This was going around the Internet. A lot of people, right. um, some say that that's weird. Yeah, self-cessed yeah. is the term. How do we feel about it? So what do we think about the term self-cessed, Mike? If you I, had I a clone of yourself, would you? No. Um, I, I don't care about the term self-cessed, but I think it's very on brand, and I'm not the first one to say this, for the character of yeah. Loki, who's so narcissistic, to only fall yes. for a version of himself. It's very, totally, like, yeah. it's very, like, it's the right character beat, I think. It makes sense. Well, here's... I wanted to say, so obviously you mentioned Doctor Who before. There's a, there's an internet fandom called Super Who Lock, right? And there are people that are like obsessive fans. I don't know if you guys know about this. No, but please. They're fans of Supernatural, uh, Doctor Who, and <laughs> and Sherlock. With, okay. uh, and Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch is Sherlock. Yeah. Goes so into that pile. And are like a connected <laughs> fandom. There's a lot of like kids that used to be on Tumblr and stuff, mm. but. Loki is fitting into the same audience where it's the same people online uh, that are into those shows. And it's a very specific fandom. But uh, those are, seem to be the people that are talking a lot about self cessed And I've also heard complaints online about um, a lot of people ship Mobius and Loki. And oh, they, there's even people accusing the show of queer baiting because they thought, you know, Loki and Mobius were going to be we're going to get together. And uh, okay. so there's a lot of upset fans about that. I don't know if you guys are wow. aware of this at all, but I think it's very interesting. I didn't hear about the shipping with Mobius. I only cared about the jet skiing with Mobius. All right. That's, yeah. Yeah, there's that's a lot the of aquatic fans vehicle I'm into. Before the last episode, they were like, okay, we don't want Loki and Sylvie. We want Loki and Mobius. And if they do Loki and Sylvie, then that'll just ruin the show because that's self-cessed and we're not into that. Well, they kind of, well, I self-cessed. I don't care about the self-cessed, the Mobius thing. It's no. like, I yeah. mean, it's cool. They had the, the conversation, Sylvia and Loki on the train though, you know, where it like hints, the doesn't hint, but like Loki kind of just says, yeah, bisexual, a little bit of both, you know, and whatever's, right. whatever's clever. Yeah. There's definitely uh, on his passport. It says gender fluid. Uh, so there's a little <laughs> reference there. He's gender fluid. And he said, you know, he, goes both ways which is which is cool but he a lot of birth I guess to a, a lot snake, of fans that are you know he's, he's yeah, a mother. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. But there's a certain subset of fans that wanted a mobius low-key relationship and felt like the show was going that way and that the low-key sylvie <laughs> thing was a red herring it just you know off the dome i don't Can't feel make like anyone happy this <laughs> I just, yeah, well, yes, absolutely that, Mike. But boy, I just, that is just such, so much fascinating energy to put on to something. Right. But these <laughs> yeah. are like people that ship know. Sam and Dean from Supernatural who are right. actual the like, brothers in the show. I think, That's so. incest. Yeah. Self-cest <laughs> is, is not worse than actual incest. You can right. do incest. And the other thing, yeah, like self-cest is completely fictitious. Like you can't. No, Mike, I actually... do it to myself every week. <laughs> it it <laughs> happens, right. but it's different. It and doesn't hurt anybody. Hurt. Right, right, right. Right. Yes. But I think I would if I met a clone of myself, male or female, I would probably well, be interested. And, but Jacob, <laughs> I'm a very this, attractive so, person, yes, it's uh, true. One thing I think we need to clear up real quick before we answer whether or not we would bang our other selves. <laughs> right. Because this, I think, I really oh, I think we need to square this up too. Do you guys believe in a multiverse? Oh, Dude. man. I, I believe... I, I like parallel universe theory and like the idea that there's infinite universes with infinite possibilities... You know, I believe we're, li we're living in a simulation. Yeah. So it doesn't allow, but infinite simulation could yeah. be. I'm, 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 I'm in the this universe bad one. That cre the whoever created this simulation is living in a universe that could be infinite universes. 
Yeah, could just be like tank. living in a simulation. Well, there's a you know there's a popular theory that every you know the whole world is a simulation because we have the ability to simulate uh, AI, right? So what if we're in a more sophisticated AI created by a higher life form or something? I'm like taking that. you to the simulation variants of the yeah, you're right, getting right. fucking burned. Prune this guy. Um, you can delete it. Yeah, the main obstacle for me, maybe wanting to be with a variant of mine would be how emotionally available are they? You know, can they really be there for me? That's what's going to be the deal breaker. <laughs> well, they would understand all your needs and wants because they would have the same, the same ones. Well, right? if they did, then Sylvie wouldn't have betrayed Loki and uh, killed Kang at the end. That's so true. That's well, that gets into the, you know, nature versus nurture. Discussion, Trust no so. one, not even yourself. That's the lesson from Loki kids. Don't forget. Would right. you guys have sex with a robot? <laughs> Let's oh, just man, answer these questions for the, the rest of this. <laughs> is that's for the WandaVision episode. Come on, man. <laughs> You're late. You're right. Let's go back and insert that in my... Yeah, yeah. It's already... The timeline is it's set up. Uh, <laughs> I plead the fifth. Depends on how hot the robot is. Yeah, like if it's a, a robot version of me, then yeah. Ghost probably. in the Shell? Yes. yes. Likely. That is what it is. <laughs> okay. Um, getting a little off the rails, but that's what this show does. Um, <laughs> I suppose... <laughs> Speaking of robots, we have the robot TVA, as we said, Wizard of Oz, Red Herring. Um, but then Renslayer, still down to like, speaking of other ships, people were like, Mobius and Renslayer have a thing or not. Right, right. You know, she seemed to find out for the first time that they weren't real, but then was like, ah, eh, screw it. I just really like order and we'll just not tell anybody. Well, none of up. them knew that really? the big twist is that everyone working for the TVA is actually a variant that was taken from their timeline and... and it doesn't seem like they have memories of their former life, but who knows? And then who knows how time works at the TVA because they've just been there for all of eternity, basically. Uh, yeah. So it's interesting. It feels like if some of them have memories from like the 1990s at an Applebee's, that they haven't been there for 500 years. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Oh, my. Incredible. Yeah. Here's what I'll say. Um, as someone who strongly believes that the world is done because of the climate crisis that we're in and that like nothing matters, but still follows all the speed limits, I relate to Judge Renslayer. I like that <laughs> someone is like, no, right. no, no, follow all the rules. We're all well, dead. It doesn't like, yeah, matter. The figurehead at the top is dead, but someone's got to maintain order. There's still a rule so book. just chaos, right? What do you guys think of Gugu Mbatha-Ra, an actress who I saw in this movie called Beyond the Lights like fucking 10 years ago? And I just really? remember saying, like, this is the new star. And she kind of hasn't been allowed to do anything. Mm. Yeah, she's great in this. Um, Hunter B-15. Right? And, yeah. Uh, another Lovecraft alumni. Yes. So that's you where I first started. Right. Casting off of that, yeah. Yeah, and she's awesome. But not she doesn't get enough here I want. I don't know how you expand the role of B-15. She had that moment where she took Sylvie and was like, tell me what my past is. I want to know the truth. She finds mm -hmm. out the truth. So maybe, I mean, season two, obviously, I think she's going to play a big part. She shows up in the, the end scene of this, in the, in the new TVA where Loki finds himself at the end. So um, who knows there? But yeah, Renslayer didn't kill her, claimed to have, but just in prison. This is the place where the TVA dumps its rubbish. Everything they prune. And Elias, he ensures none of it ever returns. It's a living tempest that consumes matter and energy. They send entire branched realities here that are devoured in an instant. We're in a shark tank. Elias is the shark. Oh, there's no such thing as an alligator tank. Besides, it's a better metaphor. He's overly sensitive like the rest of us. Hang on. You're telling me that thing's a Loki too? Oh, yes. Okay, fine. Willing to accept that. Why are there so many of you? Because Loki survive. That's just what we do. Great, so how do we escape? We don't. All of us were arrested by the TVA and pruned, just like you. And just like you're doing right now, we all stood around making bad plans that went nowhere. Yes, but if you thought of using a tempad. Oh, the one thing that could easily get us out of here. Yes! They're all over the place, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> fine. What about causing a Nexus event? The TVA doesn't care what happens here. No, surely there's something to do. There is. Survive. That's all there is. All there ever was. We're done talking. Let's go. Just do what you want, I guess. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Why do you wear the horns? 
You let a child command you. You'll do well to respect the boy. This is his kingdom. Right. What was your nexus event, Your Majesty? I killed Thor. Maybe that's a good jumping off point for season two. Do we want to see where, what they're going to do with this? We've already talked potential um, ramifications yeah. of the Kang character, but what we get here is Loki returning to what feels like the TVA we know and love, very similar, shows up to talk to Mobius, and Mobius is like, I hate jet skis. Who are you, man? You know, it's like, that's not our Mobius. Right. You know? He doesn't we recognize get that Planet of the Apes, you know, you damn dirty ape sort you of blew it turn up. as we see the Timekeeper statue is changed to Kang. But uh, that's right. Yeah, I don't know. Mike, do you have like a checklist of things you want for season two? Like Mobius has to say, wow, he's got to be on a jet ski. Well, th I, I joked about the jet ski line, but that's the way I would have told the audience is to be like, I hate jet skis. If he doesn't like if this version of Mobius doesn't hate jet skis, that's like a big missed opportunity. Um, you know, to let us know that he's really a bad Mobius, but it, it all depends on when it comes out and how Tied it Mobius. falls in. Yeah. How it ties into, um, the rest of what's coming in between now and then, because obviously there's a lot going on, as we said, with multiverse, quantum mania, Spider-Man, potentially. Again, how many ramifications can these things have, Mike? Kang cannot be defeated in Ant-Man and the Wasp because Kang was just clearly set up in Loki. And if you watch a season two and you just go from season one to season two, there has to be some continuity. Or does there not have to be? Because it's Marvel. And if you watch Age of Ultron to Infinity War, you're like, what the fuck is going on if you don't watch anything else? It could be. Well, I'm... I think it's like, uh, I wonder if it's going to be like Thanos where he made a bunch of appearances like in end credit scenes leading up to uh you know infinity war but didn't actually show up in a big way until later i wonder if that's how kang is going to be where he shows up in ant-man but he's or maybe he's going to be i don't know i didn't read that much about it but jonathan majors like the, the... was cast as kang for quantum mania i don't know if he's the main villain mm -hmm. or what role but the thing is with kang remember we're saying he can show up this that but there could be so many. There could be one in Quantum Manium that just sucks ass and is easily defeated. The others find that out and then are like, I need to not suck as bad as that crappy Kang. Right. You know what I mean? There could be so many versions sure. of this character. So the sky is really the limit. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So that I wouldn't. It feels very like Dragon Ball Z, Mike, to be like like a Frieza. Like I sent my weakest version of myself to fight you. It's like, yeah. oh, cool. <laughs> or yeah. like you said, there's the Young Avengers. Like you said, is it Iron Lad? He, he's a version of King who's like, wow, I become a fucking villain. I I don't like that. I'm gonna go back yeah. and fight villains, right? So I, you could do anything, and that's why I'm interested. I didn't really care, you know. I didn't know about King, you know, as a, as kind of a comic novice, as as everyone knows. Maybe it's just being the Jonathan Majors fan, but like I just want to see every iteration of this in every spot they can yeah. put him. I can't get enough. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and you know, we also didn't mention uh, another great part of this show was when they went to the end of time and we saw a bunch of different Loki variants. Yeah, right? yeah. Did you guys like right. that part? We didn't mention Loved our it. favorite. Alligator wow. Loki, right? <laughs> Colin is your boy. Hey, let me do 30 minutes on it, but we should just say to transition from that Young Avengers thing, a common villain of Young Avengers is Kid Loki. And we get this mm, motherfucker go, yeah. in this planet. This has to be another connection thing where they have to be setting that up, Jacob. We've gotten young Captain America in the Captain America show. We've got both the totally. Scarlet Witch kids in the Scarlet Witch show. We We've know got young Ant-Man girl. We've got fucking Arrow Girl coming up. Come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or uh, Hawkeye. And they're going to fight this trickster variant Loki who killed Thor? Ooh. Could yeah. Be. <laughs> I'm very cool with that. But yeah, I guess now, you know, let's mention any of the uh, the other random bits, right? Jacob, you're saying that the, the Lokis at the end of time, right? There's a lot of cool stuff there. Right. We saw a bunch of Lokis. We saw Kid Loki, like you said, Alligator Loki, Classic Loki, played by Richard E. Grant. Boastful, um, Boastful Loki, was that it? Boastful Loki, which was like a Loki that had the, the Thor's hammer. 
Um, Talk to the did any did you yeah. guys notice Throg in the jar? Because I did not notice Throg. Throg. It's Thor, but he's a frog. Do you know what Throg is? Ah, oh, Jacob, you gotta look it up. So, oh. when they're panning down to go inside Kid Loki's little hangout, calling his paws real quick. And Mike, like you said, the special effects on this motherfucker are fantastic for an Atlanta show shot in two mega hangar studios where they never saw the light of day for a single one of these goddamn shots. <laughs> Insane. Um, sure. They insert a little graphic, Jacob, of a very famous Thor storyline where Loki turns Thor into a frog. I pause it. Mm. So I hear, like, a help me, help me. I'm thinking it's Ant-Man or something. So I look. No, it's little Throg inside a jar as he's trying to reach and break out from Mjolnir. It's adorable. I yeah. wonder if uh, maybe Throg is the Thor from Alligator Loki's I hope timeline. So. In my heart, I really hope so. <laughs> I think they like, brought each other there. Is the Mighty Mutanimals? I just know those two words. Does that, does that mean anything? Does that have something to do with... Well, that uh, is very good. I'll just throw out the most obvious. For these people who are like, oh my god, is that... Yo, that's so one of a kind. What? Like, Can you even imagine? Does that mean there's a multiverse where we're all animals? Guys... We know this. You've seen Spider Ham in the Spider Verse. Yeah, yeah, that was we have. a very right. popular Marvel storyline where they were all animals. That's that's yes. what it was. Michael Waldron's like, no, this was a totally original idea. Yes, there's not a Gator Loki in that, but it's Loki as an animal. Right. Yeah, right. And I also, feel like yeah, Spider Verse is, is definitely uh, was it like a palate cleanser to ease people into the idea of, of multiverses as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I think Spider Ham could pick up Mjolnir. He does have a hammer, so <laughs> it's possible. Um, I think so. But yeah, I love Alligator Loki. I like how they're just saying, oh, yeah, he's sensitive. You know? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> so Richard E. Grant too. as classic Loki. There we go, yeah. And yes. his relationship talking to Alligator Loki. Well, I'll just say this. Typically, when there is, I can't think of a good example. I've really been stretching my brain on this. Maybe you guys can come up with one. But in modern movies, when there's like a special effects side character, usually one person interacts with that. That is their storyline. Hmm. It's like, this is my pet thing. Oh, my pet thing says this. My pet thing does this. We get the relationship that Alligator Loki has to all three of those other Lokis. Richard E. Grant respects him and like communicates with him and loves him as he loves all other Lokis. Kid Loki treats him like a pet but also loves him enough to like put him down on the ground and sort of let him be individual. And boastful Loki fights with him. And then he bites off President Loki's hand. It's incredible. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he Pres- be politician Loki. Yep. Yes, he interacts um, with every single one of those. It's just something you don't yeah, see a lot. Loki Again, too. Marvel's got, got the money. That. He's a Loki too. Uh, Richard E. Grant, I'm a fan of. Uh, you know, I first saw him in the, the cult classic with Nolan and I. Uh, a great uh, British comedy about uh, alcoholics. Uh, it's very, it's a very good movie, <laughs> uh, and I've always liked him. You know, he's a good actor, so uh, it was fun to see him kind of ham it up. Yeah. For sure. Another random thing that they included in here is um, there was a Polybius arcade machine. Do you guys know what that is? Polybius no. is like Jacob, supposedly a mysterious video game allegedly made by like the u.s government to do like psychic oh really testing, right it's they troll you no one's ever found a copy of it but there's this alleged wow. polybius game and they had one in the background of kid loki's thing and i'm like huh even polybius existed in one of these timelines just the ideas of those kind of deep cuts was cool like the sphinx yeah. with a nose and just dumb like weird stuff it was like yeah you know i like the little attention now, to detail the biggest one for comic book fans can i ask my two normies here hmm. do you know what this word is if i just say it right now thanos copter thanos oh copter. <laughs> i know what it is but not because i've read it but through osmosis of pop culture i know i guess if i may there's a storyline of which thanos drives a helicopter to do evil is that right colin he goes up against the character Hellcat, who is the co-lead in the Jessica Jones TV show in an old mm-hmm. 70s issue. Gur, gur, gur. It's almost like those old hostess pie ads, which also had a lot of Kang where he'd be like, ha, 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 I've appeared in your time to steal your hostess, young child. But it was like, you know, Thanos was doing bad stuff. He drops the cosmic cube and he gets away on his Thanos copter. It has his and name on it, right? It's like Thanos It, it says it. Thanos copter on the side. And guys, <laughs> people said... 
they'd never do it. Other people, uh, McFeely and Marcus, you know, the, the two people who write all the Russo Brothers movies, who wrote Endgame and stuff, claim that the Thanos double-bladed weapon is an homage to the Thanos copter. Uh, okay. But my God, if we haven't actually gotten the goddamn Thanos copter in something. It, it's in there. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I, I also... Oh, yeah. no, I think when I was reading about that, um, he gets, like, just arrested by the regular police at the end. Like, they just, yes. ha- oh, they yeah. just, it's like they exactly just handcuff like him, and he's like, all right, we He's got like, him boys. <laughs> yeah. like, okay. I know Thanos from the comics is also in love with death, like the physical manifestation of death, and that's why he does what he does. So, uh, yeah, why didn't they put death in Yeah, him and MCU. Loki could probably uh, talk. They got to put her in something. <laughs> yeah. Soon, 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 soon. Very soon. Yeah, the the amount of things they were able to show us with variant timelines, uh, exciting, you know, um, and especially at the end of the world, just the, the amount of things like the, the Avengers Tower and things like that. I know at one point yeah. K- Kang Industries buys it. It's spelled different than Kang, but it's like that becomes... Quang. Quang Industries. So. It's dumb to say this is all smart stuff, but let's be real. Even just these beyond homages or whatever. Mm. You take a character like Sylvie, okay? There is a character in the comics called Lady Loki. Loki constantly gets killed, much like Neil Gaiman's interpretation of American gods or Norse gods. Gods can't be destroyed. They're this infinite matter thing. They just keep being reincarnated. One of those is a woman. That's Lady Loki, okay? Exactly the same as just a Loki character. There's also... An Asgardian blonde villainess named the Enchantress. She enchants people. If you're Marvel, you look at that stuff and you go, how many of these are we going to actually get to do? I mean, I I understand we're on a good run here, but are we going to use every goddamn one of these things? Let's merge them together and create an interesting character. I don't know. I, I think they see the writing on the wall pretty well, Jacob, to be like, we always have to innovate. We always have to do something interesting. Let's not leave the scraps on the table. Let's use the whole the whole meal and, you know, whatever's right. left, that is the bones. I do like how the MCU, oftentimes, they'll make a reference to a character, but they'll not use the exact character. They'll change something about them uh, to keep things fresh, I think. Because if they just adapted every, like, silly minor character from from the comics it would be insane right or even to the um, t you would just it'd be so predictable for yeah. fans of the comics not me i don't know shit about it but so, like you get taskmaster totally. in black widow but the, it's a very different from the comic representation of black, taskmaster but still has the copying the moves thing right yeah and if that's a software brain chip who's to say there's not another taskmaster down the road or there was one before version one there's there could be a lot mm-hmm. going on with that too um, real shout out to Sylvie because you mentioned Enchantress and I forgot about this when she was going to enchant Aboleth all I'm imagining is like D&D someone saying I'm going to persuade the dragon and then they roll a roll. nat 20 roll. and it's like it worked <laughs> alright the dragon agrees to like it. you should sure. talk to the smoke monster <laughs> and okay, well, I want to ask it where the magic door is Mike uh, right roll and nat 20 okay <laughs> the, the door is over here <laughs> or you get a nat one awesome. and then it Great. reverses yeah. and gives you some kind of brain I was, disease i was really <laughs> amazed at how how she just nailed it first try but uh, yeah yeah good on her and we get classic loki holding it off as long as he can and glorious yes. purpose beautiful. that was a great sacrifices moment sacrifices himself just right? beautiful. yeah yeah a lot of beautiful stuff not just the emotional moments also like i said the the and uh, you know the animation the special effects a lot of the framing the colors a lot of purple in this show you know i'm wearing green but a lot of purple and we saw that with agatha that's kind of coming through more and the last kind of design thing at least personally i want to talk about is um kang's castle i'm going to call him kang that's not what he's called here but they were saying it was designed to look like it was carved out of that asteroid which is why it has those veins of gold running through it but to me and maybe it's just me, if you've ever seen Demon Souls, those black statues with this gold veins of energy running through it looks just like the hub world, the Nexus, a Demon sure. Souls. And it oh, just really? really hit me. I like that design. Yeah. That's <laughs> And Mike, I was thinking about um, that term Kitsunagi that you brought up in Rise oh, of yeah, Skywalker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sort of like, you know, 
bled, reformed, right? Where you if take cracked right? pottery. I think it's a kintsugi. You take the cracked yeah. pottery and use gold uh, in between it to then run through the veins. And there's kind of a beauty in the cracks that way. Yeah, where the imperfection is the uh, most beautiful part. Yeah, they I did have it. that vibe. The aesthetics of all of it. You read these things where you're like, oh, you guys didn't know that the TVA is a practical set, that that's just an Atlanta airport or, or motel that they've been using like the entire time they've been shooting at that Pinewood down there. And you're like, oh, my God, that's practical. Or, you know, Mike, you said it. The It's like a 60s admin retro useless tech inspired mad right. haven. But then you've got Miss Minutes flying in, making us all laugh. Hi, y'all. Oh, yeah, and we right. didn't really talk about Miss Minutes. It's just you know. like a um, sentient AI thing that pops up. It um, comes out of your know watch calculator, Jacob. You know, like that old of a device. Right. Yeah. I actually thought that Miss Minutes was going to be revealed as some kind of villain or something like that, too. But maybe season two, she Honestly, will be. Because... Yeah. Well, just the same way that I was talking earlier about cliffhangers. When they walked into that place, I was like, fuck, maybe it's just Miss Minutes who lives in this house. And it's just like the robot keeping the lights right. on at the end, you know? She definitely knows mm. more than she lets on and knows more than, you know, Judge Renslayer knows. And, and so there's definitely more going on there, right? She was definitely like stalling for time with Renslayer. I'll get you the files. They're hard to find, you know? So right. there is a bit of mystery with Kid. with Miss Minutes. We'll see. Um and her, her dad, Father Time, you know. Oh, maybe he'll be brought in. He's a big hourglass. But, you know. Right. Um, I'm excited for season two, Love though, Tara I guess. Love Tara Strong. Put it. Tara Strong, yes. voice actress. Yep. So, I don't know how Love much Love my more. little ponies here. We'll do an episode. Don't <laughs> worry. Yes. Let's, let's dive in. Let's do the wrap-up now, Mike. We'll give our final thoughts on Loki, or some version of us will, right yes. after the break. This is wild. <laughs> the two of you, same person. I mean, it's a little unnatural, but wow. He who remains. He who remains. She's still calling me that? Creepy. I like it. Come on, let's talk in my office. Not what you were expecting, hmm? You're just a man. Flesh and blood. Don't tell me I'm a disappointment. Just a little bit easier to kill. Come on in. We're back. We're bringing things to an end on something that's just opening up a whole new world of possibilities. The mm -hmm. multiverse has broken free. Now, Normies, you gotta you gotta watch the video feed because four other versions of me keep walking by and waving in the frame. But we are back. We're giving our final thoughts on season one of Loki. Yeah, and I'm the only show to be getting a season two for the, the new Disney Plus shows. So that's very exciting. And to shout out our previous episodes, the first video episode we ever did was WandaVision. We've covered Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Now we're here for Loki. We'll be here for season right. two. But it's been this steady kind of drip every couple months of a, of a new Disney show. I think the pacing of release has been really good. Um, for sure. Well, what I think is interesting, Mike, too, so obviously, yeah, we're going to get a second season. The first two shows, if you compare it to like comic book terms, those were kind of like one shots where they had a set story that they mm. told, uh, you know, over a certain amount of issues. But it was just a one shot, whereas Loki is like a reoccurring series where they, you know, there is going to be enough material to do season two. So um, I think that's kind of cool. And I'll give you even better, Jacob. Marvel does preludes where they'll do Avengers, the book. This trade paperback of it is the prelude to the event series that you buy. And that's so much what Kang's future feels like in the Marvel Universe. And as a prelude, you know, to all this, we started eating our dessert, you know, first, as Colin said. Because of that, it's like the big tease. As I said, I'm really excited for it because it can go anywhere. And I just want to see more of Jonathan Majors. Um, and... We'll just see how it all ties in going forward. I have a question, though, because how well these shows have done, you know, and Loki is still, I think, in like the top 10 on streaming, even though it's been finished for a couple of weeks. These shows are really popular, but movies at the box office are still kind of struggling, especially after opening weekend. No one's really going second weekend. So does the quality of these shows 
and you know the circumstances of lockdown and being in a pandemic for a year do you think theaters are going to recover like would you rather just watch your episodes of loki every week like i didn't see black widow in the theaters i you know watch it at home right and i don't think i would have gone to a theater to see it necessarily so as good as this was uh, is it a good or bad thing for the future of let's say movies right now good question um for me you know i've been watching a lot of you know just recently in the past couple of years i noticed that i watch a lot more tv than movies already where i'm watching i rather watch a season of hour-long episodes than a movie for some reason because that's just how my brain works that i think you know i'll watch four episodes of a short show at once but somehow that's you know less time spent than a movie um so you know i do worry about the future of movies just because um tv streaming seems to be a much more popular option for sure i mean it just feels yeah. it's more convenient yeah yeah, and Martin Scorsese's out there shaking in his boots that, you know, the Irishman isn't making the Netflix top ten, but then you look and it's something like 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 Army of the Dead is like the third most watched thing they've ever released. You're like, what the fuck right. is this? Mm-hmm. Look, you know, it's not up to us. It's not up to me. I don't make these goddamn decisions. The serialized nature of storytelling, it gets into this bigger question of where are we at post marvel right now like all this stuff where we're after black widow okay the movies are kind of wrapped for a second okay we're we're done with loki okay well the shows are done because what if is coming up after that it's like eternals new gamble interesting hawkeye to me i'm like oh that really seems a lot like that captain falcon black widow stuff and i really just want to see how this loki kang stuff turns out Mm -hmm. i'll show up for it if there's more stuff tying into this story, I'll show up for it. You know, like that that's the issue. It's 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 not Hawkeye, about Yeah. I'm excited for Hawkeye. Um obviously you actually lent me Colin the uh Hawkeye run with uh what's her name? Kate, right? Kate Bishop. Kate Bishop. And I thought, you know, this is really cool. So I'm He's excited. A good one. Yeah, so I'm excited for that. And it, you know, if they keep holding, you know, I always think like you know, Loki, I didn't think I was going to like it. And then I ended up being like my favorite Marvel TV show. So it's like, but, and I, but Jacob, I think part of that's because of somebody we haven't even spoke about Tom Hiddleston. You look at a guy who's like, I've been doing this for 10 years. I'm finally the producer on it. I get to call the shots on something I love. This role is so much a part of me that literally for Hall H one year, Marvel doesn't do the unveiling, doesn't do the cast members come out. They have Tom Hiddleston come out in the Loki costume promoting Dark 2, you know, Thor The Dark World 2. Mm. Okay, where else can you do that? Joker can come out to, you know, pitch a <laughs> Batman movie, but that you can't have, you know, Clayface come out, Jacob. You can't have, right. you, can't have you know, the, the Dark Elf from Thor The Dark, Malekith The Dark Elf come out. No, you, you can't do that. Right. Tom Hiddleston well, is an amazing yeah. actor. And he's always had that built-in fan base. Like I mentioned, the, the Super Hulak fan base. They <laughs> love Tom Hiddleston. So, um, you know, they love the Tom Hiddleston Loki. So he's got Was that Was he on base. Sherlock? I don't remember that. No, it's just the well. same aesthetic. And it's just, you know, it just seems like something they would like. You know, if you like Benedict Cumberbatch in Sherlock, you like Doctor Who. You like a skinny white like British Luke. guy. Who Basically, just has yes. the most molasses <laughs> voice. You know, let's look. Uh... Only Lovers Left Alive, a vampire movie by fucking uh, Jim Jarmusch. Jim Jarmusch. Yeah. Gu- Guillermo del Toro's Crimson Peaks. Mm-hmm. These fucking delicious roles. The Night Manager, if you guys watch that, that this guy has just mm-hmm. been cleaning and batting up. Jacob, to bring it back to our original point, the reason I'm not excited about Hawkeye, can you imagine any universe where some blogger goes, Jeremy Renner gives the best performance of his career as right. Clint Barton's Hawkeye. <laughs> You're like, no. Well, there is like a weird Jeremy Renner fan base, but I don't think it's okay. Like... <laughs> I, you, you get out of these internet. Look, forums. there's all these niche fan no. bases that you don't even know about, Colin. But, We're gonna have to tie a rope um, around Jerry... you, and we'll, we'll pull you back if you get in too deep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jeremy you Renner... don't know about the the Mission Impossible, um, <laughs> Red Hurt Dwarf. Locker. <laughs> no. um, Jeremy yeah. Renner, I'm not a huge fan of him. Some people are, I guess, but I'm a huge fan of bow guys, bow characters. I've famously always been a bow person, so 
Give me some bow action. Yeah, big fan of Ooh. South Korea. Plenty of gold medals this year. They're they're killing yeah. it, man. Hey. Archery, man. Yeah, like a loss, it. you know. Yeah. Uh, right. So I'm always down for some archery and some some action. Um, you you know you're right. It'll probably be more like the super spy Black Widow type type stuff, but uh, opposed to the mystical or the the um, all the you know the other stuff. But still, I'm gonna watch it, of course. That's the ultimate test for me because I've been skeptical on every show and they've managed to turn me around on characters that I didn't care about. If they can turn right. me around on Hawkeye, well, then, then they're they're geniuses at that point. They can they can really do anything I, they want. Yeah. Mike, well, I'm more Eternals? excited about... I, are you guys excited about Eternals? Um, well, I'm interested because obviously Chloe Zhao... And, uh, you know, I'm interested to see what she does with it. So that's the main reason, because I don't know much about the Eternals, but just the, the, the prestige of it, I guess. I'm You're interested because that one interview where she said she got to shoot outdoors. <laughs> we filmed you just outside. just want to see what that looked like. Right, right. Just in general, I just want to know what outside looks like. I'm still an acclimator. <laughs> I just need more of that. Yeah. Um, Mike, are you Hawkeye excited thing? for that? Uh, for the Eternals? I want to know if Mike's excited yeah. for Eternals. Yeah. Yeah. What sold me on the Eternals was... Camille Nanjiani's uh, professional photos he took of his jacked body because he's like, I'm never going to be in now. this shape again. So he hired a professional <laughs> photographer to take these glamour shots. This is it. Oh, sure. <laughs> he literally did that. He's like, I'm never going to look this good again. So I'm getting professional photos. I love if photos. he was fat for Eternals too. He should pull the Thor <laughs> the in Thor, it. Yeah, him. yeah. He'll go back. That's got to a you. great cast. Uh, you know, yeah. Salma Hayek and uh, whoever. But, um... Well, you know me. They should have switched... Um, Angelina Jolie with Charlize Theron. They should. They should have just. It's, oh my god! Right. How dare you, <laughs> Jacob? What were you gonna say about Hawkeye? Well, Hawkeye. I'm not as much interested in the Jeremy Renner side of things as the sort of passing of the torch, like Black Widow, to the new Hawkeye. Uh, that should be interesting, and uh, it's you know, obviously Haley Steinfeld, right? That's going mm, to be. Bumblebee. Our so little bumblebee, our bumblebee is all grown up. We're yeah. very excited for here here on this podcast. So yes, the young I Avengers. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Mike, are you looking forward to Hawkeye? Not at all. Do you like bow guys? <laughs> oh, good, no, but you. I did just look up the fan base for Hawkeye is Hawkeye colon hot guy. <laughs> oh, I, I just made that up. Sure. That's not true. Jeremy oh. Renner is a hot guy to some people. Hot guy, hey, yeah. He's hot got that guy. undercut in Endgame. That yeah, Mohawk yeah. Thing. I'm not, Guys. but I was not interested in Loki, and it surprised me. So we'll see. I do like Haley Steinfeld, yeah. True Grit, Bumblebee. Let's go. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but Loki, you're right. We didn't talk enough about Tom Hiddleston. He does a great job. He gets to do a different version of Loki that didn't have a redemption arc. He sees. Right. what his life will be. He gets to do a little bit in more uh, dynamic range with the character than even in yeah. Endgame. So we do see a lot more shades of Loki, literally and figuratively, in this than we ever got to. And Tom Hiddleston does a great job. Maybe hyperbole. I think the two best acting moments now in the entire MCU are uh, What is Grief, the Vision speech, and Loki in that first episode observing the timeline. When he's watching yeah. the entire events of his life play out, touched by seeing his mother saddened by seeing her death, excited by seeing his relationship with Thor, until that final gasp where Thanos breaks his neck. I mean, it is an emotional roller coaster. I mean, somebody right. sits him down and says, here's everything you're ever going to do. Was, come on, yeah, great job. Right. Imagine? It's interesting because, Moving you know, scene. he doesn't... Yeah, he he didn't go through the, the growth that that Loki went through, but then he sees the events of that life. So he sees himself... Uh, you know, basically try to kill Thanos and, and you know, die a hero, basically. Yes. Um, but he's still that original Loki that tried to, you know, take over the Earth from Avengers 1. And he learns a hard lesson that, you know, all most Lokis cannot be trusted. Even when you're reformed and you're really trying to do the right thing. Yeah, that's what you did to everybody. Like, he has to experience that firsthand. I think that's why it was great that Sylvie betrayed him. He needs to go through it. There's a lot of worry now that Kate Heron is not coming back to direct the second season. Mike, Michael Waldron, that moment that you just said, I think is absolutely so indicative of, like, this guy gets Loki. I think when old man Loki is telling the story of how he took himself out of the equation mm -hmm. to survive for so long, well, why did you come back? How did you get caught? I grew lonely to see my brother, and I wondered if he missed me too. 
knowing that at the core it is a Thor and Loki duo dynamic, we're in good fucking hands. Yeah, especially with how well Taika Waititi rehabilitated Thor, and now right. the, the way this show has added so much dimension, parallel dimensions, there's another one, count it, uh, to Loki. Yeah, that dynamic is only going to get stronger. Who knows if there's stuff planned out for Love and Thunder. You know, maybe That's the thunder question. and love is between brothers. Who knows? Well, and we got Lady Loki, obviously. And then in Love and Thunder, we're going to have Lady Thor. So, oh, yeah. man. There's so many ships that could set sail. <laughs> yeah, <Yes>. self-assessed. <laughs> God, bring it on. What's, hey, Kevin Feige, tell me what phase four is. It's one word. <laughs> self-assessed. He takes off his hat, pulls out a note card. <laughs> That's right, Normies. He puts on uh, another hat that has two <laughs> versions of one guy kissing. <laughs> there we go. Normies, write in and let and let us know how you feel about self cessed If you want to do a deep uh, dive on the internet, what's there's your a favorite self subset of shit. yeah fans that are talking about self cessed and all this good stuff. So let us know, yes. self cessed yay or nay. A lot of people have been stuck at home with no one else to love for a year, so I guess it makes sense. <laughs> yes, it, it it's tracks true. why those people are interested. Only in Only have each other. Yeah, but we want to thank you for having our backs and listening to this episode on Loki. Yeah, great Disney Plus. Disney needs more money. Go subscribe. <laughs> watch this we show. weren't kidding. You know, reach out at normies underscore like underscore us on our socials. Let us know. You know, say hey, this is variant listener so and so. You know, I would kiss myself everywhere. I would. Yeah, you know, <laughs> tell us everything. You know, mm-hmm. give us your thoughts on Loki. Um, and you know. Give us suggestions for upcoming episodes. We're always talking new stuff, but we love user submitted ideas. If you if you really want to hear us talk about, you know, um, one of the, the weird Knight. arcade games, the, the oh yeah, well the, the Green story Knight of Polybius, sure. yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, we'll do it, baby. Yeah, I appreciate it again. Uh, I think Alligator Loki needs to get back in his pool, so maybe it's about time we sign off here. Your host. I've. I've got uh, a dog, Joe, here, too, by the way. He's been sitting at my lap the entire time. So we're saying goodbye. Variant Colin. Variant Mike. Oh, this is uh, Kangaroo Jacob. I'm a variant that's a kangaroo. <laughs> and then in my pouch, I have, like, another variant that's, like, a baby kangaroo version of me. Yeah. My oh, favorite that's variant. That's the Joey. Trying to kill the guy I know to keep that guy with me. <laughs> oh, man. It's the sequel to Kangaroo Jack in that universe. Can't wait. That's right. All right. We'll catch you next All right, time, thanks, Normies. Thanks, Normies. Bye. Don't get pruned.